All right, my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our City Zoo Build, Tropical Wings Zoo. So we are back for a fresh episode of TW. Linked above though, my friends, is the link to last episode in case you have missed it. Um, some bear habitat. I hope that was the last one. I'm a bit all over the place, to be honest with you, gang. I'm still not very well. Still got a cough, still got a sore chest, still got a cold. I feel like just as I'm getting better, I end up sick again. I generally don't know what's going on at the moment, um, but I think that's what we did anyway. Today, brand new habitat, brand new animal, but the big thing about today's episode is that we're gonna be doing um, a lot of planning in what's happened, uh, what's happening next. Um, this really is a segue into the bigger projects that are coming over the next few weeks. So we start at the entrance as we always do, my friends. Now, um, today's episode, um, there isn't actually a huge amount of work that's been done. And this is a really unique episode as well. I wanna throw that out there because I have built a habitat for the animal that we're gonna introduce to TW today, but there's potential that I'm actually going to make this habitat slightly larger later down the line. Um, I couldn't do it now because the plans that I have are very unique. And so um, until I put some pathing in and I raise some levels and I potentially put um, the croc house in and stuff, I don't know if it will work or not. So for now, they've got the habitat they've got. If we can't extend it the way I want to, then I'm quite happy to leave it as it is. We just need to decorate um, some edges and um, and sort some stuff out. I also want to throw it out there that, to the most part, this habitat is done, but it is very much a work in progress. A lot of the back lot area hasn't been done, and I will explain why as we go along. So anyway, let's jump in, because lots of work has kind of been done to the surrounding areas as well as the new hab. Um, so we were working over here for a long, long time. I've decided to take a break. We're actually right back at the entrance, gang. And the first bit of work that I've been doing is around the flamingos. Um, this area has kind of been left for a long time because we decided to kind of just work off into the, the right-hand side. We started Primates of Africa and it kind of naturally took us in that direction, didn't it? But I have circled all the way around and come back to the entrance because I needed to start getting all this sorted out because, you know, I needed to know what way our path was going to go off this way, how we were going to potentially kind of move on over into the pygmy hippos because I'm actually considering doing them soon um, because I want to wrap around to the sort of Indo-Asia area that we've um, begun. And I'm gonna talk about all this in the what's happening next rather than now. I like to do the, the uh, you know, present you with what I've been building first and then we talk about all that later, but potentially that's what I'm gonna do. So I've had to start putting pathways in, I've had to start thinking about vegetation, how we're gonna do the plants and whatnot. So I've been working really hard on this area. Now I am gonna throw it out there. I wasn't entirely pleased and that happy with the flamingo house when I was looking at it after I came back here but for some reason something in this area is glitching and whenever I try to work on the house um, it just kicks me out of the game so again I'm having a bit of a problem here like I had over here if you remember rightly I've kind of to the most part got this down to a to where I need it. There's just a tiny piece of fence that I need to get in there. Um, it's just very frustrating. I just felt like the house looked a little big and a little clumbersome compared to what we've built elsewhere. But it, at the same time, it isn't terrible. So if we did have to leave it, we could leave it. I wanted to add a little bit of long grass in here as well. But to be fair, I don't actually think it looks that terrible. Um, so I couldn't really do what I wanted to do. But then as a result of kind of working on this, I decided to then start working on all these planted areas and kind of, I had to start thinking about how we were gonna move forward into the zoo, basically. I needed an animal that we could use as a segue into, um, you know, deeper into the zoo one direction and deeper into the zoo the other direction. And we know to the, to the left-hand side, we're gonna be building the water world area. Um, I asked the people of the Discord for name suggestions for the water area. Um, what I would like to do is kind of like a big kind of um, 
like a little sign basically as you walk into the area it's basically going to house all of our semi-aquatic animals um so and also the fake aquarium because i'm going to kind of build the i'm going to build the exterior of the aquarium um and um just have it as a fake building and then potentially at a later date if we were to ever get proper aquariums in the game i could go back and then kind of fill it out basically there are ways you can obviously do it but the art style of the screens and the fish you're going to have are not going to match the art style of what we've got in the game and so that's why i don't really want to do it and i know the modding community has obviously like done some really amazing stuff with the fish and whatnot but i'm just not that keen on the f movement that they make um i'm not don't think it's like as good as it could be that's no knock on the modding community though they're doing an amazing job but i would just like things to look a certain way so that's what i'm thinking of doing in the water world area and uh, yeah, I've just mentioned it to the guys in the Discord. I'm now going to mention it to you. If you've got any cool names for the water area, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Um, you know, I'd like to get you guys as involved as possible. And I'd like to get you involved in the names because I'm not that very, that very good at the names, to be honest with you. I'm pretty awful at it. Um, so yeah, so I had to think about this. So what I've decided to do was add a bunch of planters, like bigger planters. Um, we've not like filled them out. I've just kind of put some light bushes, some bigger trees and whatnot, because then it kind of, um, I feel like it kind of uh, encloses this area a little bit, which is really, really nice now. Um, and it keeps everything a bit of a mystery as well. Obviously our new animal is gonna be through there. Um, and also I've been doing a bit of planting um, along here as well, and trying to get to grips with this little water area that we've got here, basically. Basically. So what I've decided to do is just fill all this planting out next to um, the primates of Africa House. I'd already put this wall in this side and I'd done the retaining wall, hadn't I, for their walkway. But I've now placed a bit of wall in here basically. Um, we've put some planting in. I am going to go a little bit heavier with the planting along here. Um, and then I've kind of put these two little water fountains in. I'm going to put some lilies um, in this area here. I am going to put some more aquatic plants, but I'm not going to go too crazy. But it's going to be more of, you know, just to tidy it all up, make it look a bit pretty. And I've done it in a way that the guests, you know, are far enough away. There's another um, retaining fence there that we can't have any accidents, basically. Um, I just kind of wanted this to be something that passed on by. Um, and we are obviously, uh, we've got one grate here, but I am probably going to add another grate at the bottom so that we've got our water movement in here, basically. Because, like I say, I'm going to start thinking about the Pygmy Hippo soon. So, um, yeah, that I needed to kind of start working on this. And also, we've brought this path all the way up here. And it is obviously going to have to go off in this direction as well, gang. Um, so, yeah, just a lot of planting. Um, I've used the rope fence because i quite like it we've used it over in the sort of sort of indo-asian area we, we used it over near the aldabra house i feel like it was a nice touch around here as well and then if we go around this way i just need to finish the planting off in here um i was being a bit fussy with it to be honest with you i placed a few plants down didn't like them deleted them out um but i've started started again basically there might be um a bit of a weird cut in there gang um the doorbell went <laughs> always away when i sit down to record and do all the audio for an episode um i completely forgot what i was talking about as well i think it was about the plant in here um so yeah basically i've uh, just kind of changed my plan just got to get this little bit finished off and then you come around this way i've actually added some nice seating now um for the flamingos that weren't here before you will remember none of this was finished off because i didn't know what i was going to do with it but now we've got this nice little seated area i think it's the perfect place actually to sit take a load off watch the flamingos um another little one here and then we're going to be working around off into this way so as you can see you can kind of view all the flamingos now come to the end and then you're going to go around here and that is going to go off into the water world section basically the flamingos are kind of like part of the segue in there and they kind of work a little better than the other animal because um you know they go in the water and whatnot themselves but um then you've got uh, the middle section, like I say, with the plant in. But you come through here. As you can see, there are some very, very slight kind of steps up. There's a slight deviation, basically, in the... Um, in the um, 
height of the ground level and whatnot. Um, and then you come up and you come into this big open space, which I actually really like. Put some seating in here and you are welcomed by the camels. Now, I'm going to throw it out there right now. Some of you might think that this is a little bit, I don't want to use the word boring, but you might just think it's a bit low key, maybe a bit plain. But when I was doing a lot of my research, as I do for every single animal, a lot of zoos don't go that over the top with their camels, um, especially smaller city zoos. They don't even tend to give the camels that much room. They're usually um, either um, thrown over into the kind of, uh, into the sort of, um, uh, the, the, like the petting zoo area, basically. They're usually either put over there with all the petting zoo animals or they're given a pretty low key, um, medium sized hab. And so that's what I've done, basically. I have already said, that we might extend this hab at a later date. I might make it slightly bigger, and I'm going to obviously tell you my ideas for that. I'm going to tell you the ideas for extending this hab, um, why I present it, so you can kind of get a vision for it. And then when we do the what's ha uh, happening next, I'll talk to you about the bigger picture and why I'm um, thinking about doing it at a later date rather than doing it now, basically. So yeah, this is our new um, camel hab. I'm gonna uh, basically just get you a nice big wide shot of the hab. Like I say, it's a bit plain, it's a bit low key, but at the same time, I really, really like it because I feel like I've nailed the, I think I've nailed the kind of look and the hab I was going for. And I think I've kind of nailed the realism as well because at the end of the day, that is what this project is. It's about building as realistic a zoo as possible inside Planet Zoo. Um, there's a few little details that are missing at the minute. Um, obviously, some of the details inside the house are missing because as I say every episode, I'm waiting until the very end to do all of the really kind of like minute details um, to a lot of these habs. Um, what I mean by that is kind of like pipes on the wall, um, you know, um, sinks, um, hose pipes, all these little bits and bobs that just kind of add a lot of pieces to the game um, at an early stage that you don't really need to. I, I might have to go back maybe a bit earlier than when the project's finished though to add some of these details because as I've mentioned already today, I am having a few little issues here and there when I'm trying to work on certain areas of the zoo and I wouldn't want to come back to every single hab and have problems like that. So I might have to dive in soon and start adding those details. But um, yeah, and I haven't done the backstage area either. Um, my reason for not doing the backstage is because I'm still not really sure how the road is going to connect up to this. We're probably going to have to do another gated um, section where we have one of those access gates like we've done in Adventure Africa and like we've done uh, at the end of um, the, uh, prim uh, the Primates of Africa and... Um, like near the new sort of Asian area, we've got the access gates, haven't we? We're probably going to have to do that again. We, it won't be the last time we do it either in the zoo because with it being a city zoo, your perimeter is pretty tight. So you're going to have to, um, you know, weave your staff areas in and out of the zoo um, in a certain way. So we haven't really done that either, but the rest of it is pretty much done. Um, so yeah, like I say, it's really, really basic. It's kind of like a 180 viewing as well. Like you've you've got your viewing from two sides. There's a slight little resty rest um, bit there, but. Do camel areas really get that built up? They're not the shy, shyest of animal either, so it wouldn't matter if there were quite a few people here, kind of looking at the camels. Um, I think it's, um, I think it's, you know, quite quite a cool way of doing it. It's something a bit different. We've not really done that. We've just done very uh, specific viewing areas for our other animals, um, and um, yeah, so we've done the double fence. Um, idea i didn't want to sink the ground in again i was looking at a lot of the habs i've done and i've sunk the animals level a lot lower than the guest level and i just didn't want to do that again so i've left it the same but i've just used a double gate and i've used a lot of space and then um the bit that's between it is just kind of like left to get a bit overgrown and as you can see the grass is kind of like merging off into the hab but because of the way the camels are 
uh, it all keeps getting trodden down or the vegetation gets eaten and you know camels are very destructive species I'm you know you've got to be really careful about the vegetation and whatnot that you put in the hab anyway um, and then yeah like I say nice sort of bushed area there just to kind of give them a bit of a respite um, and then you come around here and this is the other side of the viewing area and from here you actually get a really kind of cool look at the camel house which is very very unique compared to a lot of the other houses that we've um, that we've built in the zoo to be honest with you in the way that it looks um, but I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a minute and so yeah you kind of come this way and obviously we're going to go off in this direction we are going to go off in this direction um, so it was like um, kind of like a, a nice sort of animal to use because you're going to go off into a big section there you're going to go off into a big section here and it's a nice kind of like segue animal I'd kind of asked your opinion what you think we should have used um, a long time ago there was lots of suggestions the camel was never mentioned and it was only because I was looking at the animal list and I couldn't really think of an area where I wanted to put the camel other than here to be honest with you unless I did a petting zoo um, which I might do at a later date I'm really not sure um, unless I did that would I I don't really know where I would have put the camels to be honest with you so I feel like this is a nice spot for them I know it's quite early you don't really see the camels that early into the into the zoo I know it is quite early but I just felt like they were the one species that I thought would actually work quite nicely here um, especially as you know the zoo is very heavy on houses and buildings and so this is nice and open this is nice and open um, so it's just a nice little part of the zoo um, where we've got a couple of like a bit bigger sort of outdoor um, uh, outdoor habs basically so if we take a, a closer look at the hab I've done this uh, similar design back here that I did on the Babarusa and the um, warthogs where we're going to have um, kind of like um, a keeper's yard back here um, and then the gate's going to be off uh, into the habitat there basically and then on the other side uh, again very similar to how I've done with the Gemsbok and whatnot we're going to have an access gate on the side of the building uh, that will eventually go to a um, back lot uh, resting area and where they're going to be picked up and whatnot um, also I've had to do this in a particular way because I was doing a bit of reading on the camels and they have to get camels into crushes um, it's I know that word sounds terrible but it's not it's actually a contraption that the camel goes into they secure it in there and that's how they can get do the medical and they can you know give them injections and things like that because they're a bigger animal um for anyone that's in, uh, you know knows anything about agriculture um a lot of farms use this on cows to kind of uh, trim their hooves and stuff like that um so um they use a similar system with the cow so you needed to have tighter gates so that you could get the crush up to it so you walk the animal in and then you walk it out basically um some zoos actually use the um, habitat doors and put the crush up against it and kind of just um, use a kind of system where they walk them in and out like that but some zoos also use a system where they would put the crush on the gate and then they'd walk them into this area before allowing them back into the hab basically so that's the reason I've kind of done this design like I say none of this back here is done at the moment because um, I'm not really sure how this is going to work as you can see I have sort of started some work on the road system that's going to come over here but because I don't really know where the path's going yet because I don't know what's going here I don't know what's going here here so on and so on um, I couldn't really kind of bring it over and continue it but I would imagine it's probably going to be a gate about there and I'll probably put a gate about here kind of straight on which leaves this space I think it kind of makes sense I don't, but I'm not sure yet I've uh, still got to work out the logistics for that um, so yeah those are the access uh, points for keeper and animal uh, as you can see this is the camel's house we will have a look at that a bit more uh, in a moment but again it's just really basic use the uh, the uh, protective retaining walls using the logs to kind of stop the camels from destroying all of the foliage some of the grass would obviously creep through and grow into the hab that's why I've done that we've got a kind of um, got a couple of logs that are kind of from trees that have been cut down they've been left and then just some rocks and some logs and the trees as you can see I've kind of guarded them a bit differently in the camel habs because they would just bowl through anything that's uh, not secure and rub them against, against the trees and pull the bark off and whatnot so we've done that um, 
And then again, you know, just kind of little bits of like logs and bushes and whatnot. And then over here, we've got their trough, which would be changed if we do extend the hab. But for now, they've got like a proper water trough right there. And then we continue going this way, little scratch pad, again, protective retaining walls. And um, that is pretty much it. This is their feeding, um, you know, area. Um, but I just really kept it super, super basic because a lot of the examples I looked at kept theirs really basic. So I wanted to make sure that I was working the same way, kind of like a normal zoo, um, a proper zoo and whatnot would work as well. So um, that's kind of like the reason I've done this the way I've done it. Now what we're going to do though, gang, is we're going to take a look at the house. Uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so let's go through the keeper access door. So basically what I've done for now is we've got a keeper access gate here. Um, so obviously they can be able, they're going to be able to come in this way. I will probably put an access gate next to this um, this uh, door as well. So it will be really easy for the keepers to uh, get to the kitchen areas that are located over here. I do need to start adding some like hay storage and places like that as well. Um, maybe to the back of these habitats and kind of like in these spaces I don't really know what to do with. We do need to start adding some stuff like that. Um, but yeah this is kind of like their way in obviously that's their way into the hab and then this is their way um that one of the ways that they can go into the housing unit so this is what i've done for the camels and it's a little bit different it's very similar to what we did with the gems box only the, i don't feel like the gems box were um kind of as secure really they've they've got more of a slide um door system whereas the camels um it's the doors on the front of the habs that allow them in there is one slide door inside in case we ever need to open it all up and then this side here is in case we have any sick animals or if we um, have any um uh, camels about to give birth and whatnot we have a separate section there which is why we put all the boards up on the side um, but yeah I've kind of done this so that this level here is a shoulder level so the camel can actually hang its head over the edge but I you know from what I was looking at this is a really popular thing to do um, I tried to keep it as a mixture of wood and metals would have gone with all metals because obviously metals bacteria doesn't grow as well on metal so and it's easier to clean basically whereas because um, wood is porous um, things like that can get in the wood and it's a lot harder to treat this see I'm proving that I do my research here um, but I have gone with a bit of a mixture because a lot of the examples I was looking at again went with a bit of a mixture so that's kind of like the reason why I have designed it the way I have now it is a slight angle the roof um, I've basically decided to put a proper ceiling on here um, where the keepers part is but if we go to the animal part you will see where the wooden struts are basically that kind of hold the roof up that you see on the front of the building. Um, it's really kind of like, again, it's kind of like a bit similar, but very unique at the same time. Um, as you can see, these two parts are a bit larger than the uh, than the part that you've just uh, looked at. The doors on the front as well. Uh, we've got our little feeders in inside. Um, and then it is proper gates for the zookeepers to kind of go through, basically. Um, but they can obviously get a good look at the animals um, because of the nature uh, that we've uh, kind of built this area, basically. But I actually really like it because it is a little bit different. Um, the animals can't just like wander about in here. The zookeeper doesn't walk straight into their habs, basically. Um, has, to, has to walk in here and then go in uh, that way. And then if I just take you this way, uh, I decided to go really, really different on the front of the hab as well. I've done these like larger doors and um, it's actually good practice because I'm going to have to do something similar to this when we get do the giraffes. I know they're going to be enormous, um, whereas these are slightly larger. So the, um, the animal's um, shoulder is at their bottom door. Um, so, um, and then obviously, um, their head comes to about halfway up. So then they don't really need all this space, but obviously camels are a large animal. So it's good to give a bit of headroom, but it was just something I wanted to do. I wanted to go with a bit of a different design. I wanted to try something new. I think it's come off really, really nice. Actually. I think it looks really, really good. And then obviously the roof does overhang. Um, on the front of the building. I wanted to do this to just kind of provide some shelter and some shade for the animals. Um, and then obviously we've got these wooden um, 
struts that kind of keep the roof up. I do need to put some bits in the bottom really so they're kind of like really dug in the ground but um, just uh, lost track of a time basically. Um, but yeah, it's not really much more to talk about. It's really, really simple. It's really basic but at the same time, I hope you'd all agree, it's kind of a pretty habitat. It's kind of like really, I, I quite like the fact it's really simple because Sometimes zoos don't go overboard. They don't go crazy when they build these animal habs. And um, I feel like we've absolutely nailed it. Again, the roof needs some bits and bobs added on it. There's lots of little details that I haven't done, but I've got lots of work to do. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Right, so I'm going to give you a big kind of overview of the zoo because I'm going to be talking about multiple areas um, in the what's happening next. Now, I'm going to basically talk you through absolutely everything that I've got planned. I'm not going to show you the proper plans because I've done planning episodes already for some of the areas I'm going to talk about but I'm basically just going to go over all of it. And my reason for doing this is um, I've a lost track a little bit myself of what's happening especially as I've had to take a bit of time out where I've not been feeling too well um, but also I just feel like it just gets everyone excited and then if we come to an episode like today, for instance, where I've done a hab that I hadn't announced before, um, hopefully the next hab is something that I will have announced. So you'll kind of know what we're working towards, basically. So there's a cup. There's there's obviously this area here you know about. You know about this area here, and you know about what's going to be happening here. But there are going to be some additions in here as well that I think we need to talk about um, because. They're going to provide a really nice kind of segue into this area here. Now, I've said it a few times. I'm not creating this zoo um, so that it's to be walked around in just a circular motion, whether that be clockwise or anti-clockwise. I'm not doing it so that you have to just walk around the edge and you come to stuff. Um, basically, there are going to be tributaries that um, exit off of the main pathways into other areas. Um, you know, for instance, this here is a main pathway, um, and then this could be considered a main pathway as well, but there is going to be a tributary that comes off of this main path, so that you're going to be able to see the pygmy hippos, and you're going to be able to see an animal around here, and that tributary is going to come round, and it's going to join up to the Asian area. So yes, it does mean that you might cut out a fair bit of zoo up here, but zoos do this. I've been looking at maps of zoos, and they don't all just kind of follow this way, so that it's really easy to just go around the edge. It forces you... It forces Forces their, um, it forces the guests to take different routes because then it doesn't mean that this, all of the same footpaths are busy at the same time. So that's basically what I'm trying to do. As you all know, the, I'm trying to make the most realistic zoo I can, basically, by doing the reading, doing the research, and doing the planning, and then putting it into um, putting all those things into the process of building and then hopefully um, coming out the other side with something pretty cool. And to this point, I feel I feel like we have, basically. I feel like we're really getting somewhere now. Um, the zoo's really starting to fill out. Um, especially when I was building this and then I, was, I could see that fence and it didn't seem that far away. And it might look a distance, but if you're thinking about it, it's probably two or three animals deep. So it's not. It's really, really not. Um, so... That's that's that there is quite um, it's quite interesting really when you start looking at it like that. So first and foremost, just a quick recap of Adventure Africa. Um, we're going to be putting lions, we're going to be putting wild dogs, we're going to be putting rhinos and ostriches, and then we're going to be putting giraffes, zebras, and gazelle all in here. Basically, I'm not going to go over it anymore. If you want to see the proper plan um, that we've got for that, there is an episode. I will link it above um, for you, my friends, so that you can look at that. As we come over here, we know that we're putting the Indian elephants um, in this area here. Um, we're putting the Komodos up on a hill, and we're also putting the tapirs um, in here as well. But I'm not really sure how I'm going to do the tapirs now, because the sun bears turned out very different to how I first imagined. And I am considering doing a skywalk, basically. Um, so I'm thinking about doing an elevated walkway. We'll do it so that there's these nice, um, you know, nice supports that come off of it. Um, and then I'm thinking about doing it so that it's just a really cool way basically to look at the zoo um, in more detail kind of get a good look at the babarusa the good look at the sun bears because obviously the sun bears you've only got this one little viewing area um i'm gonna have to just come out of that a minute 
Yeah, you've only got that one little viewing area. So I am thinking of doing that off of where the Komodos are. And then the the Skywalk would then finish um, back over this way, near where the Indian elephants are, basically. That's what I'm thinking of doing. But I don't know if I want the Skywalk to go around the edge of the tapir or to kind of cut through part of the tapir's habitat and we just disguise it with trees and whatnot. Really not sure. Really, really not sure. But I'm thinking of doing that. Then over here, we know that Waterworld is going to happen. Now, I have started thinking about where things are going to go, basically, because we've got to start doing that, where animals are going to go. Um, in here, in this area here, I was going to put an animal, but I just think that it's, got, it's going to be really compact if I get an animal in there. So what I'm going to do is probably plant up this area here, we're going to have the this this come up here about to, here. We're going to have that access gate in. So this area here it leaves a big amount of space. So I'm going to probably put a bit of plant in here. But we're probably going to run a fence just across, basically, all the way to that supporting gate. And then in here, I'm going to place like maybe like a small storage warehousey type thing with maybe some like hay storage and things like that. Basically, just place it all in there and just fill that up. Basically, we're going to take a little road off because we want to have access for our flamingos, basically, in case they ever need to go on and off of uh, off the site. Um, we're going to fill all of the pathway in uh, and whatnot, but I think that's the best thing to do in this area, is just fill it out with some nice storage areas and stuff like that. Um, obviously, it ends up just becoming um, buildings that are not really used, don't it? But um, the, the, it's all the little details that help. Um, and then, obviously, we're going to have that gate there. But just before that gate, I'm going to have the sign, basically, for Waterworld. Um, and th what I'm thinking of doing, so that this kind of makes a bit more sense, is the um, Crocodilian House. And I'm just calling it that, but it's probably going to have all the frogs in it. It's going to have the salamanders. It's going to have the terrapins, basically. I'm going to do a big house. I'm probably going to put that up on um, higher ground. And then what I was thinking is, from... I'm going to have a slight walkway around the side of it, basically, here. Um, and then I was going to take a piece of that path off this way, right? And we would join it up to this main path here. But that was going to be um, slightly elevated, that piece of path. So when it got to about here, I was going to do a very open bridge. I weren't going to make it like enclosed or whatnot, but a very sort of open walkway so that our camels could walk through under the bridge. And then on the other side, we'd probably have a space no more than about, I don't know, half of this, the other side with a nice little water um, area and then um, a little viewing section over here but you'd also um, this side of the bridge you wouldn't be able to look into the hab but on the other side of the bridge you would there'd be just a couple of little holes so you could actually stand on the bridge and look over into the second part of the camels it wouldn't be la that large but I just felt like it might be nice to put another bit in because then we could have I'd a couple more camels basically would be quite cool. We've only got three at the moment, but it might be cool to have a couple more. So that's what I was thinking of doing. So that path was going to come off and that was going to join to the main path. So it was another way, another sort of tributary that you could take to go to one of the big houses basically. So the big croc house was going to go here. Um, and then what I was going to do with the croc house is off the back of the croc house, join it up to the aquarium. So the aquarium would be like, over here, that fake aquarium that I was talking about, that would essentially be over sort of this direction. Now, what I'm thinking of doing in this area down here, um, and it really depends how large it's gonna be because I've got a particular idea that I wanna do with the sea lions. But I'm thinking of doing the sea lions like down here. And the reason I wanna do it is because the path is gonna come up to the sea lions, right? There's gonna be, a path going this way and a path that goes this way and in because there's going to be a show area and then there's just going to be their habitat area basically and they're all going to be joined up i've got a particular idea i've started drawing up plans and whatnot for it um so that's kind of like but there's going to be an entry exit basically pathway that goes kind of cuts through so that's what this is going to be so you kind of be forced to kind of go to the sea lions or you can come around the edge and you'll be able to still see in and see the sea lions, but there'll be like a pathway that kind of like you walk past it. So the sea lions, I'm guessing, might go about here. The croc house will be over here with the aquarium. And then down here, I'm thinking about, I was thinking about doing polar point down here, 
basically, all in here. But I'm not sure if it's going to be enough room for both the emperor penguins and the polar bears. Obviously, I make more realistic size habitats, so they are slightly smaller, um, so the polar bears are not getting a habitat the size they usually would. But at the same time, I feel like they are going to need maybe a bit more room than I can give them down here. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it will all work itself out. I'm sure, like, you know, if we wanted to build down this way up and then like you know there and that's enough room surely for the penguins and the polar bears the emperor penguins have got to be indoors anyway and then the polar bears i was thinking about having a mixture i'm mean, having a small indoor section and a, an a, and a outdoor part basically um and then we were going to have the sea lions we were going to have that croc house um and then um i think that was like all i had planned basically for the water section to this point um and then if we come over this way we need to talk about this as well. So in here, we've always said our pygmy hippos are going to go in this section here. And I still plan to do that. That is still very much the plan um, to put them in here. The plan for the pygmy hippos changes constantly because where they are a semi-aquatic animal, they do require some land area. Um, but it's like, how do you want to do the pool? How, do you want to have an underwater viewing area? Um, do, so that does that mean I'm going to have to take it down lower to do that? Are we going to do a house with that in? There's a million questions that need answered, basically, before I do the pygmy hippos. But they are going to go in here. Which means there's going to be a piece of path that's going to come off this way. And this path is going to continue. But there's going to be a piece that comes off this way for the pygmy hippos. And we're going to wrap that piece of path round. And after the pygmy hippos, I was thinking about doing the bongos. Because we had them on the list. And I didn't realise we did. But I was thinking about doing the bongos in here and i was just going to do a really heavy dense planted um habitat because they are a really shy species with a couple of really small viewing pockets basically so you can kind of see the animals um very similar to the bongo hab that i see at dublin zoo basically it was really dense and there was just these really small viewing sections that you could kind of just peer in no more than two or three people deep in each section and you could kind of just peer in basically and i was thinking about putting the bongos kind of like in here so then it means that this um this little area here ends up being closed off we would bring this road um uh, we'd finish the roads off but we'd just bring this around and have a gate here obviously there'd probably be an access gate back here for our staff and whatnot and then we'd bring it round and then I was thinking of doing like a little sort of restaurant-y I know we've got this like pit stop sort of area but I was thinking about doing like a little sort of small shack basically like this maybe um, over here at the bottom of the hill basically so the path would come in here and then that's where the restaurant would be um so that would be at the bottom of the hill and then um maybe it would kind of merge onto the hill and then the hill would snake up and that's where the komodos would be and it's just nice because it would bring a pathway round and i'd feel like it would be another big plot that would be finished off in there because i feel like at the minute i'm working i'm finding it easier to work in the direction that we just fill the zoo out and work towards the back this was putting me off for some reason this just working sideways to work towards this i was getting really um confused and bogged down with it but doing these habs as we just work up to the top the way i have been my work flow has been a lot more progressive and a lot more settled so that's kind of like where i'm at gang and that's it that's what's going to be happening next over the next number of episodes. But I just wanted to get it all out there so you know what to expect. I don't know what will be next. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Um, but whatever happens, you'll have an animal and you'll have one that I've uh, mentioned in today's episode. And so there you have it, my friends. We are done and dusted for another episode of Tropical Wings Zoo. Um, enjoy the cinematics of our camels and let me know what you make of the hab. Like I've already said, it's really simple, really plain, but we needed this animal to be done so that we knew where we were going to go next, basically. Um, but yeah, obviously, I've added the plant in. We've really beautified the zoo up. Let me know what you've made of it, my friends. I would really, really appreciate it. But um, I'm done. If you are new around here, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It'd be very, very much appreciated by me it's the best way to support the channel um we hit 3k a little while ago here yeah, we're now on the road to 4k so um yeah please 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 subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed what you see drop a like on
on the video as well. It's really important that you do so. But until next time, stay safe, stay humble, and I will see you real, real soon. Oh,